Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So guys, in today's video, we are going to deep dive into Pandas, a powerful Python library for data manipulation and analysis. Whether you are a student or an experienced data enthusiast trying to enter into a data field, Pandas is a must known Python library for everyone. Just stay till the end of this particular video to know completely about Pandas from basic to advanced level. So before that, guys, don't be commercial. Do subscribe the channel and on the bell notification if you are finding some valuable information in my channel. So now let's get started. So guys, now let's start with our first topic. So basically, if you are working on your local system, you require an installation. If you have any issues in your local system, like the system is lagging a lot and you are not able to install Python and if the system is very old, then you can directly use Google Colab online to work with it. So you don't require any installation for that. Just go to your any browser and search for Google Colab and you will get this kind of interface and just click on file and new notebook. So you will get the notebook here itself. So once you get the new notebook, it's loading. I'll be just showing you basics of Google Colab and afterwards you're good to go. And then I'll be showing you all the local installation. So now this is your Google Colab. Okay, so you got it right. Now just click on connect here. If you click on connect, it will by default get connected with your Python, which runtime, Python runtime. So now it's connected with our Python runtime. You can see if you click on this, you can see here. So the RAM system RAM is of 12 GB and the disk is of 107 GB. You will get it by default, the cloud storage. It's not your laptop storage. Okay, you're getting my point. Now just click on this code. If you just click on this code, you can create something like this. Uh, and here now you can just type for pandas, import pandas as pd. Or if you want to install, if you're getting any issue while importing, if you want to check whether it's installed or not, just give an exclamatory mark and type pip install pandas and just run it. So what this exclamatory mark does when you just give it, it will consider this particular line as a command. So with this, you can check, you can see here it is already installed. It is showing requirement is already satisfied in your Google Colab. Normally it will be by default installed. You don't need to install it again and again. So just connect with the runtime and just type import pandas as pd as pd pl or anything of your choice you can give at the last but pd will be normally used by everyone so we are going to use it you can see here import pandas as pd is done so you are good to go with this particular runtime now let me just show you all about the local system installation it's a bit tough task for local system installation if you are trying to install it now so just create one empty folder at any location of your choice and select that select this point and just type command cmd if you just type for cmd you will get this kind of terminal okay so here you have to first install python so for installation of python and for installation of the pip it's a package manager by python to install this pandas and other libraries we require pip so if you have not installed that and python i have made a separate video for that that particular video link will be in this video description you can check out that video and after installing you can come back here and you can continue this series you're getting my point so now here what you have to do you have to type same pip install pandas so when you type it here it will check for the installation so i have already installed it so it is showing me requirement is already satisfied. So for pip, it's definitely required to install pip or else you cannot install any libraries in your system or in your local computer. So please consider installing that and check out the video. The video link will be in this video description. So now what is our next task? So this is already installed, right? So our requirement is already satisfied. Now what we can do, we can directly launch our Jupyter notebook here. So for Jupyter notebook, and uh, Jupyter Notebook is by default available in your Anaconda installation. When you install Anaconda in your local system, you will get Jupyter Notebook or else you can separately also install that. I recommend you to check about that. So now go to your just command prompt and search for Jupyter Notebook. I mean type for Jupyter Notebook here and press enter. 
so you can see here it's launching so i got my jupyter notebook interface here just click on new and select python kernel here so now you are good to go let's just uh, import pandas for now then we'll start with our pandas subtopics i'll tell you all what are those subtopics and what is the agenda of this particular video we'll discuss about that import pandas as pd so let me just import it you can see it's successfully working there is no errors here okay you are getting my point so now let us just start with the subtopics of pandas what we'll be discussing in this video let me first explain you all the agenda okay so guys now first let me note down the agenda for you all and then let us discuss in detail about that so let me just select this as heading for now yeah so agenda is done now here markdown so our first topic will be that data structure and the second topic will be of input and output we'll be discussing about this and we'll be discussing about data exploration and data manipulation Finally, we'll be seeing the visualization. So let me just run this. So this will be our main agenda of this particular video, and we'll be discussing one by one related to pandas. So first, let us go with data structure. So this is data structure. Let me just give you a small definition about data structure. So in pandas we have mainly two fundamental data structures that is series and data frame i'll explain you all about it one by one when it come to series series is a one dimensional labeled array that can hold any data type so you can create a series using pd dot series i'll just practically show you all now in this particular uh, jupyter notebook my voice is not proper a bit uh, cold and cough so guys just kindly bear with me until the end of this particular video so first let us create series so series is nothing but a one dimension array so we will be creating that how we are going to create we'll see so we have already import pandas right so we don't need to again import it again and again we can directly use pd so now what we will be doing, we will be just first creating a series data frame. For that what we can do, data is equals to and we will be opening the list here. So in the list, let me just give you randomly some numbers. So this is the list right now. Okay, So I have created a variable called data and that I have named as it's a series. So now what we will be doing, we will be using pd dot so let me just search for it shift plus tab if you press it you will get it normally jupyter notebook takes more time to select what is it so it's fine i'll just create a variable again series is equals to pd dot series and inside that what i'll be doing i'll be giving data variable so when i run this no attribute series okay 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 capital s yeah so it is s is capital okay so guys don't get confused s is a capital letter so now if i just check series you can see it has created a data here with that data is equals to one two so you can see here this is the list and what i have done from this particular series variable i have given pd dot series and this will be our data so this is one dimension data you cannot see any rows and columns only you can see the one dimension so this is called series series is nothing but one dimension data you are getting my point 
so guys now the second topic in this particular data structure will be that we will be creating data frame let me first explain data frame and then i'll create uh, i'll show you all with the practical example also so data frame is a two dimensional label data structure with columns and potentially different so you think that now if you see here there is no labeled column so only whatever we have created the list you can see here in a series you cannot see which column it belongs to and we did not even create that also it is just a one dimension basic data so but when it comes to data frame you can create a data frame i mean data with uh, with that in a rows and columns format so i'll be showing you that it can be two or more dimensions so you can create n dimensions of data from this so let me just show you all the uh, practical example you will get it easily so we'll be again creating here a variable data1 is equals to for this also it's same pd dot data frame it will convert into data frame so here what we'll be doing we'll be opening a dictionary i'll tell you why we are opening dictionary so let me come to this name so this will be our key and inside this i'll be opening the list so here what i'll be giving some random names like a b c and finally i'll be giving d these are enough for the basic examples after this what i'll be giving i'll be giving you a comma press enter and then what we'll be doing now so once the name is done so our key and value pairs are done now again what i'll be doing i'll be taking as age let's take the example of age so for example first person's age is of basic normal example i am taking 16 17 18 so this is done and again give a comma and press enter so now again what i have done now i'll be taking a example of city only so in this what happens now i'll be giving him as bangalore will be one second third fourth so let me just run this data first so you can see here this is key value pairs so key is name age and city and value pairs are these particular lists so let me just create a data with that so what we'll be doing we'll be again giving a df is equals to df is nothing but shortcut of data frame shortcut name df is equals to pd dot let me check whether it can show me so you can see a pd dot data frame you have data time index you can explore all this i'll be showing you all one by one so data frame and inside this you can just pass that data one so once we run this you can see here it has created a data frame with that so let me just show you all this so you can see here why i have given you Uh, key value pairs here and why i have given the value pairs in list you can you got to know so these are nothing but are main headers of this particular columns and rows you are getting my point so you can see here a is age of 15 and he belongs to bangalore b is age of 16 and he belongs to pune so we try to create a valuable data with this we can download it in a csv format or html format or any other format i'll be showing you all that also in detail so this is a two or more dimensions you can see a two dimensional so you can see a rows columns so this is a two dimension but when it comes to the series it is having only one dimension so only one way and there is no header or anything you are getting my point so this is mainly about data structure this is the base foundation of pandas you should know how it's 
created and what is the main use of it. So I hope you got about this. Now let's dive into our second topic and discuss more about input and output columns. So our second topic of pandas will be that it's nothing but input and output. Let me just copy this so that and paste it there so that you don't get confused which code I am executing for which. So this is data structure. This is our first topic. You got it right. So here I'll be giving for input and output. So let me just explain about this now. Working with data is essential and pandas provides us convenient features for reading and writing data. So input and output is nothing but for reading and writing the data we'll be using this using various sources. So let me just first explaining explain you all about reading the data. So reading data for this what we'll be doing. So let me just show you all there are many ways to read the data pd dot tab. So you can see here if you just press tab you can see here read underscore clipboard you can even read the clipboard read underscore csv file you can read the excel file you can file read the fwf files html files hdf json parquet and pickle files. So pickle and everything it comes in machine learning don't worry we'll be learning about that also in detail in the upcoming videos. SQL queries, tables, even SQL files, you can read all files using this particular pandas read function. So read underscore. So I already have a data of CSV file. You can see here I have taken the iris data set. This particular data set I just taken for the sample to show you all and it's available in Kaggle. You can just go to Kaggle and search for the data set and, and you can have a try with it. So pd dot read underscore. Let me just press a tab and select CSV. So again, open the braces. Now I'll be reading Iris data set. For that, what I'll be doing? I R. I'll just press and I'll press tab. It will automatically take. If uh, there is only one file, it will automatically take it if it's in that same location. So let me just run this now. You can see here it is easily reading the data. These are the particular columns and rows available in our particular iris data set. So sepal length, sepal width, these all are the data which is available in our iris data set in CSV format. So pandas is able to read it. So I have the CSV file. So I read it. You can even have a try with other files also like SQL, Excel, all other files. I would recommend you all to download it from somewhere and you can have a try with it. So iris data set, I have read it. Then what else can I do? You can even store this in any data frame like df1 is equals to in a variable. You can store it so that you can perform any other manipulations whenever you want. Like you can perform many operations using pandas to check whether there is null values or anything. And you can even perform all those operations. We'll be seeing that further. So let us for now just store it in a df1 format. I have stored it. So this is our first format to read the data. So the second format will be nothing but even we can write the data. In this particular input and output. Uh, where is this? Yeah. In this particular input and output topic, you have two topics reading and writing data. Reading is nothing but input. We are taking the it as an input. But when it goes to output, we will be writing the data. So whatever is available in this particular df1, I can write it as a data or let us take a basic example. So we have already stored this particular data, right? Our data frame created data in data one. We will try to write this only. I'll show you all how to write that. For that also, it's nothing but just you have a function called. So we have data, right? Data one dot to press tab you will get it okay uh, df dot to underscore tab yeah you got it to csv so just open the braces now again so now in which and uh, yeah so what you want to write will be giving the name like in which format it should be stored. You can give it as a CSV file, HTML file, anything of your choice. 
So I'll be giving this as dot csv output file dot csv and this is not df let us give it as data1 and run it dictionary object has no attribute to csv okay So, okay, it's in key and value pair, right? So, it's showing that. Finally, we have stored it in DF, right? So, okay, okay, I got it. We cannot write the dictionary formats, but we have... You can see here. So, we have created the variable and we have created the data. Then, finally, we have read it in DF, right? So, it's stored in DF. So, now what I'll do, I'll be just writing for this only. You can see here, df object has no attribute to underscore, okay, to underscore csv. So it's done, you can see here, now if you check this one, output file, it is stored. Now we can, we'll try to read this same output file only once again. So for this what we'll be doing, we'll be again, copying this so here what will we do we will take it as output file dot csv so let's run it you can see here so this it it has taken this by default so you can drop this particular column unnamed column this column it has taken by default because of uh, here the numbers are available right so it has taken it in default you can drop it so you can see a name, age and city, whatever we have entered, it uh, it has been saved in a CSV format. You can even save it in other formats also like Excel, like SQL format and many other formats are there based on the data. I would recommend you all to have a try about that to get a detailed knowledge about that. Okay, so this is all about our input and output topic. So now let's dive into our third topic about pandas. So guys, our third topic is nothing but data exploration. Let me just copy this. Okay, so this is data exploration topic. And in this also there are various features. So before we deep dive into our particular data analysis, let us explore some essential techniques to understand the data. So that is nothing but data exploration. We'll be exploring the data, we'll be understanding the techniques. Okay. So our first let us discuss about the basic exploration or basic information. We can check with pandas. So for checking the basic information, Pandas offers us several useful methods to gain insightful inputs from the data. So you can use, so we have already stored it right somewhere. Yeah, we have already stored our Irish data set. So where is Irish data set reading of? Yeah, we have stored it in DF1. So we'll be using this only further for data exploration also to understand the basic insights. So what we can do, we can just type df1 dot head and run. So you can see here, normally what happens uh, if you just check for df1, you can see here, it will show you the detailed information. It has 150 rows and five columns and you can see here, it shows you all everything, 149 rows, until 149 rows, it can show you all and you can see here, there are some between dots. You can not see the complete the details, but when it comes to this df1.head, you can see here, you can see, by default, it will show you all five rows when you run with df1.head. You can customize it, you can enter like how many rows you want, you can enter 10 rows I want. First 10 rows, it will be showing you all. If you want, you can even enter for 30 also. Okay. And run it. It will show you all the first 30 rows. Using this, you can see the head. Head in essence, the first 30 rows. So for that, we can use DF1 to check about that in detail. You are getting my point? 
So by default, if you leave it without giving anything, it will show you all only the first five rows. So in the same way, when it comes to this head, you can see using head, you can see the data. The same way, there is another function also called tail. When you run this, it will show you the last five rows at the end. So 149, 148, 147, 6 and 145. So I have a question for you all. Here it's showing 150 rows. There is 150 rows present in our particular data. Then why it is showing you all only 149 here? Then where did 150th row gone? So I want you all to answer this particular question in the comment. I know it's very easy. If you have a basic knowledge about pandas also, you will get it. I want you all to check about that and answer about it. If you don't get it, it's fine. The answer will be in the comment section. Either I'll be updating it or else anyone who is watching this video, they'll be updating it. So those who are going to update this particular answer, they are appreciated. So now let's continue with the topic. The same way in tail also it comes. Like you can even give default like last 10 values. I want to know the last 10 rows. You can give it. You can even do customize for this particular tail also. So this is the basic explanation. I mean basic information you need to know about some functions related to data exploration. And there is even one more function called df1.info if you just check this it will show you all the information it will show you all the information related to that particular data you can see here this is sepal length the column name and this is of the zeroth column and in this there are 150 and there is no null values in this particular data set this is a clean data set from Kaggle so there it is showing that there is no null values let us Check about the null values and everything in data manipulation. The next topic. So and it's showing its data type also. When it comes to the sepal length, you can see here it's in float, right? 6.7, 6.5, 6.3. So it is showing float 64. And when it comes to a species, so you can see a species is nothing but it's the name, right? So it's an object. It is showing in object format. You can see the detailed information of each and every columns in that particular data. You are getting my point. For that, we can use df1.info. When it comes to df1.shape, there is an another function, final function of the basics. So df1.shape and you don't need to provide this. So using this df1.shape, you can get the detail information like how many rows and columns are present in that particular data set. It is saying that 150 rows and 5 columns are present in that particular data set. You got it so these are the basic operations basic information now let us check some advanced operations that is nothing but you can even perform the statistics descriptive statistics using this particular uh, pandas also we will be checking about that descriptive statistics so this is our topic 2 I mean subtopic 2 of the data exploration. Let's complete about this. In this, it's nothing but let us uh, just, there is a function called describe. df1.describe. If you run this, it will show you the basic descri uh, describe of that particular data. You can see here the maximum value is this and the 75th percentile, 50th percentile, 25th percentile mean median count and everything it will be showing you all in detail information about each and every data set so this uh, mean mean of this particular uh, sepal length is 5.84 so mean of this particular width is this much you can easily get the details you don't need to practically perform any calculations so this particular pandas library will do it by default at the back end for that you can use this df.describe to check about it in detail so in the same way there is something and operations there are many operations like you can even perform df1 dot mean and if you run this it will show you the mean of that particular data set if you just run describe you will get everything in detail but if you want to find out only specifically mean median or mode or maximum you can just check with this so this is the mean of that particular data set if i run for median you can see here it is showing the median of that particular each columns using this particular operation also you can perform 
and you can check separately of that particular column how much is the mean and how much is the median and everything so normally if you uh, we use uh, df1 dot describe to get everything in detail because we don't need to just separately get about this in detail using describe we'll be performing many operations when we are doing the machine learning project or anything don't worry we'll get about that in detail when we start with the projects and when we de deep dive into our machine learning playlist also it will be coming very soon <coughs> these are done so and finally there is an another function also df1 dot core core is nothing but correlation it is very helpful for us to find out the correlation between the columns like the correlation between the columns whether it's perfect true positive or false positive true negative or false negative about correlation i'll be explaining you all in detail in the upcoming videos don't worry if i try to tell you all now you will get more confused so df1 dot describe df1 dot median so these are the functions these are the statistical functions which you can perform using pandas so this is nothing but our second topic descriptive statistics in this i have explained you all related to data exploration so when it comes to our final topic that is nothing but final subtopic sorting and filtering data so this is our final subtopic of data exploration so in this uh, sorting and filtering of data so we can sort the data in ascending or descending orders or you can even specify some criteria and you can sort the data based on that for that there is a syntax let me just take the sorting syntax first let me explaining you explain you all about sorting and then i'll explain you all about filtering so this is the syntax for sorting sorts the data frame by its name so this is the syntax okay you are getting my point so based on this what we will be doing now mm. let's manipulate this only here itself so it's df1 dot sort so name will be will be taking what we can take from this petal width okay let's take petal width itself based on the petal width it should be sorted in ascending order let's store this so that you can easily compare it let me run this so it has been run successfully now if you check df2 this df2 petal width based on petal width it should do in place is equals to true and everything is done so why it's not showing df2 Okay, let me to check df1 once so i can see the df1 here properly based on petal width it should be done let me just remove this in place equals to true so what does this in place equals to true it will do it will just directly make the manipulation in df1 itself so let me just change this to petal length let us store in df2 is equals to so now if i check df2 okay so you can see here now let me to run here df1 also to compare better based on petal length it is it's been segregated like sorted in ascending order you can see here the first petal length was 1.5 so and 1.1 then 5 1.5 again then 1.5 so but when it comes to the df2 after performing an ascending order you can see here the first petal in this 1 1.1 1 
1.2 so it is uh, arranged in an order i am just showing you all the basic example you can perform this to any operations like to any data i would recommend you all to try out this so you can understand about this in detail this that's all about sorting there is nothing but df1.sort underscore values there is a function sort underscore values in that you have to give this criteria and you have to mention like whether you want to sort it in ascending order or descending order and even some criteria you can mention like customized criteria in which you want to do you can have a you can explore it and you can have a detailed knowledge about that so now let me to show you all about filtering filtering of the data so in this what we can do we can perform some filtering operations like df1 of so in this particular data frame so from df1 of the column name like i want only the column name column name let us take species this time so let us explore with species which are only double equal to is nothing but which are only like versica okay irish versica i want only this particular flowers i don't want other flowers apart from this so i can perform this irish versica is not defined okay let me to just give this you can see here it is only showing me iris versica here it is not showing any other column so let me just store this in a i'm just creating a variable so let me just run now first so you can see here, these all are only iris versica you can filter out from that particular data i want only this so you can even perform many filtering operations also i'll just show you all one more example before that let us check the shape of this particular versica so only versica flowers the data contains about versica flowers is only 50 col 50 rows and in five columns also it's present now getting my point so this is how you can perform the filtering operations there is even you can perform some one more operations also like for example let me to copy this same code like based on this data you can perform uh like sepal width sepal length petal width petal length so based on this float functions what we can do we'll take sepal length only so sepal length is greater than i want only the sepal length which are greater than 5.8 i mean the data related to that only i don't want any other data apart from that so you can see here those are 70 rows means like in versica or else in other color uh, in other flowers or other species also so the sepal length which is more than 5.8 so these are the flowers there are around 70 flowers whose sepal length is of uh, 5.8 more than 5.8 you can even give greater than or equal to if you give greater than or equal to okay so it will show you so 77 so 5.8 also it will get considered previously it was ignoring 5.8 and apart from that it was showing which are greater but now it is show, considering both 5.8 also and then greater than that also so when we perform that it is showing me 77 flowers so that's all this is all about data manipulation so our third topic of the pandas uh, agenda is done now let us move on to our fourth topic that is nothing but data manipulation so let's dive into that now so guys now let us just dive into data manipulation so first let us check with the values let us see the values which are present in particular column for that we have some function called as values so we can check it like if you can see a df1 of sepal width dot values so if you run this it will show you the values in that particular column it will show you what all what all are the values present in that particular column so you can see these all are the values which are present in that particular column 
you can bring it in a one dimension format so when it comes in this format it becomes a one dimension it's not two dimension you can separately bring it out and you can even save it separately as a 1d array or you can say you can save it as a series you're getting my point so now let us check with the data manipulation so you can handle missing values so the first thing will be that you can handle missing values in this particular i mean in this particular data so for that there are mainly three functions all the three functions can do the same process but let us discuss one by one firstly let me note down those all here for you all first one is nothing but df dot let us directly execute and see now it will be easy so the first function will be nothing but df1 dot drop now so what does this particular uh, function will do it will drop all the null values which are present in our particular data set so in our df1 so this is our df1 right uh, in this if there is any null values present in this particular df1 so it will directly drop for that let us uh, just check uh, whether it's null or not then based on that we will drop for that there is another function called is now using this you can check that whether there is any null values in this particular data or not is now dot so now you can see here it is showing there are no null values in this particular data set because this data set is very clean i got it from kaggle so it is showing that there are no null values in this particular data set you can check whether if there is any null values and you can drop it the data set which you are going to try out so this particular this function can only work this particular df1 dot drop now function can only work when there is any null values in that particular data set so we don't have any null values in this particular data set to handle so if you run also it will run but it is not going to handle it out you can see here 150 rows by 5 it is not going to handle it out you can just run and see when you have a null values in your data set okay so this particular uh, drop now is useful for that there is another function also df1 dot fill na so normally when it comes to data all the data you cannot drop it for example like let us take this irs data set only as example 150 columns you have you are building a machine learning model so if you if there are some null values like around 60 to 70 null values in each column then if you directly drop that 60 to 70 rows then it is like half of the data you are dropping out so then it is like if you drop off of the data then what is the use of building the model then you will not get the proper accuracy also right so in the data if there will be very less data and already whatever data or important crucial information which might be required to us it might get dropped so because of that always you cannot use drop now like for example in 150 columns if you have only some 3 Then approx 10 percent of that particular entire data, 10 to 15 percent. If there is some null values, then you can directly drop it because that 10 to 15 percent is not going to affect us. But when it comes to more, like majority of 40 percent, 50 percent of the entire data is having null values, then you have to find out alternative way to treat it out, or else you cannot perform the operation by dropping the null values. Remember this. So for that, there is a function called fill now. fill now what this particular uh, data uh, this particular function will do it will automatically fill whatever wherever there is a null values it will fill by some of the uh, common values which are present in that particular data you can either use this and again you cannot use this where always if the data is 50% or something because then the data might become biased also so you are not allowed to use it always also for that there is some of uh, like some operations like you can perform uh, mean you can replace the data by mean and you can even replace the data by mode you can uh, replace it by the fifth percent i mean there is a quantile functioning like in statistics there is a 
function using which you can perform that and you can replace it out. So I will be showing you all that when we will be doing a project, it's not an issue, but just understand this fill now will also not work for this particular data because there is no null values in this particular data. It's showing must. Uh, yeah. So if you, if there is some null values, then it can perform some operations. So that is the use of this particular fill now and drop now and everything. If you take some data set which is having null values from Kaggle and I would recommend you all to try it out, you will get it easily. Okay. So guys, now let us uh, check with an another operation of our uh, data manipulation that is nothing but group by those who are uh, using SQL or else those who have idea on SQL, they might already know what is group by. So let me just uh, explain you all what is that group by and aggregation. You can call it as group by and aggregation. So what does this particular group by can do is that it can perform like you can group the data for with one or more columns and apply some aggregation for that like mean, median and mode. So like it will be helpful this particular group by operation is helpful for us to group with some datas like one or two datas. Like let me just practically show you the example df1 dot group by So let us take the column name now. Settle mm. sepal length. I'm randomly taking the column name. Dot mean. So you can see here it is showing after performing the group by operations. 4.3, 4.4. It is just performing the group by operations and it is showing you all in detail. Like based on this, what we can do. We can see here after performing group by, so the sepal length is 4.3. So which is having 4.3, then the sepal width is this much and the petal length is this much. It is showing the mean of all that particular uh, data, which is having with sepal length. You can even perform median, sum, sum it will show everything I guess. See, you can perform some of that particular for this particular and this one. So you can perform some and you can check. You can check with the group by operation in detail. I cannot explain that in this particular video. It will be very small. If you try to perform a group by, I'll try to cover out a separate video based on group by so that I can explain you all in detail about group by. So if I try to explain here about group by, you get confused and it will be more detail also. So check with the group by and let us uh, check the final operation which is nothing but merging of the data. So in our particular uh, pandas there is a function called concat and merge. What this particular merge will do it will merge the data like whatever data is like if you have data 1 and data 2 then it will merge those both data and it will make a one new data. Or else you can say you can it will make a new data frame and even there is something called concat it can concat pd dot concat you can perform concatenation also concat to data like now for example what we can do yeah idea yeah, i'll got it wait so what we can do now for example now we have taken here df1 dot sepal length and this one we have done right so we'll try to store this in a data frame now. So df6 is equals to, I want to store this in this particular df. So now what I'll do, I'll just, uh, where is that output? Mm. We'll save this in a CSV format so that we can perform group by operation with our original data. Yeah, so let us copy this. df6 is it dot csv yeah now let us uh, save this in form of out one run this 
so it is saved in a csv file if you want you can check it here so out one is saved and irish and output file is saved so what we'll do we'll perform the merging it here now for that what we can do pd dot concat uh, let me to just take it yeah so what we can do like pd dot concat and for this what we can do i want to merge with uh merge our df1 so we already stored our original data right so df1 with df6 so if we perform this okay before that we have to store this in a list format or else it will not run so now if i run this you can see here now after merging it is showing me how many columns 227 rows and 5 columns it got merged after adding those 77 also so where are those yeah we saved it yeah we saved it in seven those were 77 rows right 77 rows with 150 and it got added and it's showing 227 rows you are getting my point you can do this or even you have an operation called as uh, merge also let us let me to just check about that also yeah same pd dot merge so now what we'll be doing we'll be taking again like df one comma df six and run it so you can see here after merging also it's showing df one comma six and it's showing 79 rows okay it is used only to perform merging based on one based on a column it is not merging everything but when it comes to concat it concatenates and merges everything but when it comes to pd dot merge it can perform for only one column so for that i can give as column name as uh, we took it uh, species right so we'll take with species only here also You can see here with respect to species it merged it and it created a separate this one species okay sepal length petal length x y z you can see here even it has created 3850 rows from this based on the species it has segregated the data and it has created a separate points for that you are getting my point x data and y data it has created it that's all this is about uh, data manipulation so now let us see about uh, the final topic which is nothing but visualization so for visualization we have something called as df3.plot there is a function called plot using plot we can see the visually see the things visually like plot and we can perform it okay for this plot what we have to do we have to import matplotlib to see visually Matplot dot as plt. So we have done that. So it's done. We have loaded the data. So now what we can do once the plot is done, now we can directly perform the plotting. So for that, what we can use plt dot scatter plot. We'll do scatter pl plot scatter and we'll be taking it in df3 so there is a row like for example we'll take a sepal species only we'll take species the 
the column name so the species no we cannot perform with object sorry so we'll take uh, let me to just run df3 once so that we can get the idea easily okay df2 yeah df2 so from df2 what we want our uh, x column will be sepal length comma again our y column will be df2 of Width. So now if I run this, you can see here it is showing me the scatter plot. Like this, uh, this is our x column and this is our y column, and it is showing that this, the data in sepal length and sepal width format. So you can see here it is sepal length is 4.6 and width is 3.6. So when it comes to 3.6 and here. 4.6 so you can see uh, this is that particular point if you check with it graphically there are many points like you have uh, not only this one scatter you have many thing like hist plot bar plot pie plot there are pair plot you can even perform pair plot it will show you the pair plot of everything so for plotting and visualization we can create a separate video based on that i just want to show you all how you can see in pandas also visually so i just showed you all this particular graph so i'm getting my point so guys that's all for today's video finally we have covered the entire agenda what and all was there related to pandas this much it is enough and you can this is only mainly required for performing uh, data manipulation and analysis and everything so you this all agenda whatever i have mentioned everything is covered so that's all for today's video do like share and subscribe the channel and don't forget to comment below your answer for the question which i have asked in the video so thank you all bye bye let's see you all in the next video